Welcome to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, a weekly podcast where I walk you through some of the wildest, most unbelievable stories you'll hear from the world of real estate. If you like real estate and you love crazy, this is the podcast for you. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Lee Brown, and you're listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, where we're going to bring you stories about real estate that HGTV never will. But frankly, today's story is one that HGTV should talk about, and CNN, Fox, MSNBC, NBC, all the rest of them, too, because I've got a super amazing guest for you today. Her name is Kenzie Lee. Kenzie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Lee, and I'm excited to be here, and I'm very excited to be a part of your podcast. Yay! Okay, so tell our listeners where you're located, how long you've been in real estate, any tiny bits of background they should know about your real estate you. Okay, so I started as an assistant with Remax back in 2000. I was then licensed in 2003, so this is my 15th year as a licensed realtor. And I opened my brokerage, Remax Dream, in downtown Fort Myers, Florida, four years ago in 2014. So you opened your own brokerage at the end of the recession. So you were ready to take a leap as things were improving? Absolutely. I pretty much became the short sale queen for a while and was rocking and rolling. I had a team of myself plus two other agents. And my main goal when I started in real estate was to have my own Remax franchise. And now look, here I am. So you were a survivor during the worst time in real estate. And I you're, you're a different kind of survivor now. So there's something crazy about your life as a broker that I think our listeners need to totally pay attention to. So I know you're realtors and I even know that the consumers who listen, you people have ADD. But I need y'all to turn off your distractions for just a minute because you absolutely want to hear what Kenzie's story is because it's going to grab your heart and squish it really tight. So, Kenzie, tell our world what's crazy about real estate with you. There's a lot of stuff that's crazy about real estate with me. But what we are going to kind of zone in on today is probably the craziest part is that in October of 2016, I was told that I had kidney failure and that I would need an organ transplant. Being a type 1 diabetic for 27 years took a toll on my body. So I was hospitalized and told that I either needed to start dialysis or I would need a kidney transplant. So after going back and talking to my kidney doctor, my nephrologist, after being released from that week-long hospital stay, my nephrologist recommended that I have a kidney and a pancreas transplant so that, number one, I would be kidney failure, and number two, I would no longer be a type 1 diabetic. So can you tell our listeners who don't know you how old you are? Because all that you're describing could be something that people go through later in life. And they need to know this little factoid because it matters. It does matter. I'm 37 years old. Just a baby. Just a baby. I know. And I have a nine-year-old son. Who is amazing. And I love being able to watch him grow up on social media. It's the best part of social media. Absolutely. Yesterday, he had such a blast yesterday. We went to Taco Fest. He got to meet the band Lit. So we, you know, kind of snuck backstage. You know, one of those mom things you do when your son says, let's go meet the band. But they haven't had a hit in like 15 years, so it couldn't have been that hard. (laughs) It wasn't that hard. It wasn't that hard. But, you know, he got an autograph and a drumstick and a guitar pick. So, you know what? He was pretty excited. He felt like a rock star. Because that's all that matters, right? Yeah, he plays guitar. So it made him happy. Okay, so let's get back to all of your medical stuff. Because I wanted the world to understand that you're not some... Some old person, no offense to old people who are listening, but you know how it is. Young people getting big things just feels different. Right, absolutely. So growing up as a type 1 diabetic, you have a lot of issues and a lot 
of items that you need to overcome in your life. High blood sugar, low blood sugar, having an insulin pump, testing your blood sugar on a daily basis four to five times per day, four to five insulin injections per day. I would have to say that I'm completely blessed because the major thing that happened to me was only losing my kidneys. I still have my eyesight. I still have all of my limbs. I have no neuropathy. Every other issue that's a part of a diabetic's everyday life, I was blessed with only having kidney failure. So that totally fits in, obviously, with the typical realtor attitude of complete and total optimism about life because you're talking about your organs like, you know, just a kidney. Eh, You know, we got two, that's spare. Yeah, and now I have three. Only one of them works, but now I have three kidneys. So did they not take out your malfunctioning kidneys when they gave you a new one? No, they don't. And that's some crazy shit, too. So I have I have three kidneys. I have my two original kidneys that are in my back where your kidneys are located. And then I have my new kidney, which is in my lower right abdomen. And they reroute and redirect the flow. So from your new kidney through your bladder to your your reader, they build a new pipeline and they put a stint in. And then six weeks after your transplant operation, they remove the stint. So when I went in for my transplants, my pancreas was functioning at 0% on the insulin level, which it had been since I was diagnosed with diabetes. And my kidney was functioning at 9%. And being the type of person I am, I refused to start dialysis because I wanted to be able to spend as much time with my son as possible. And spending 20 hours a week in a dialysis center was not going to be a part of my life. I wanted to still make it to the office as much as I possibly can to be here to love and support my realtors. And I just wanted to take every single moment that I could stay awake because kidney failure, all you want to do is sleep. So I wanted to make sure every single moment that I was awake was spent doing something, doing anything. When you got this third kidney, your timing was impeccable, as it turns out, with uh, hurricane season. (laughs) Right. So, and if you look on my YouTube channel, I have the video of when I got my phone call. I decided to document my entire transplant process from when I started getting on the transplant list up until today. And every update I get from my doctors every time I'm in the hospital, when I get good results, when I get bad results, I do a Facebook Live video. I post it on Facebook Live. We post it on my YouTube channel and to kind of share the journey. And I receive numerous messages every single day. Thank you for being an inspiration. Thank you for showing me what the process is like. No one has documented their journey. So even from the time that I got my transplant call, when it was just me and my son Lincoln, we were at the house, we were getting ready to go to his third grade curriculum day. So we were getting ready, his school's really close, we're getting ready to pull the golf cart out of the garage, the golf cart over so we wouldn't have to find a parking spot. And he said his eye hurt and he was crying for no reason whatsoever. So we went upstairs, I pulled out some eye drops and sat him down in my bathroom and the eye drops never made it into his eyes. My phone rang and it was 5.30 in the afternoon. And when you see transplant team calling at 5.30 in the afternoon, it's not calling for a doctor's appointment. And I just looked at my phone and Lincoln looked at my phone and he goes, mommy, it's, it's your organs. And we just, I answered the phone and we're both just sitting on the floor of my bathroom, bawling our eyes out. I don't even remember what the entire conversation was about, but once we calmed down, we made our plans. His father was on his way over to pick him up and I had a girlfriend on her way over to go with me to one of my friends flew me to Tampa and Lincoln and I sat down on the stairs and I believe that video has had And we announced the good news via Facebook Live where 
bawling our eyes out and Lincoln, my, my then eight year old son is saying, mommy, just breathe, just breathe. And um, but so all of it's been documented. And I think it really helps the general public realize what a transplant recipient goes through and the entire the entire situation behind it. Well, you know, watching those videos with my son, who's 11 and has his own kidney issues and he knows he'll have a transplant in the future. He watched all of your Facebook lives and he's got this enormous sense of peace because He's been watching you and he feels like, well, if she can do this, it can't be so bad. So just as a and parent, I sit here bawling watching your videos because you're helping my kid while you right. tell your story. And your kid, I mean, he's like Mr. Old Man about this stuff because he's he, he doesn't ever freak out about it on, on camera anyway. And it's so awesome to see him pr- protecting his mom. Yeah, he has he has a few moments. Here and there. He should. He has those moments where he does get scared. But even when I was in the hospital, before I went into surgery, we FaceTimed. He was the first phone call I made when I came out of surgery via FaceTime. As soon as they pulled that tube out of my throat, after I begged him, I'm like, take it out, take it out, take it out. And he was my, I could barely even talk. And he was my First phone call, I gave him thumbs up and he got pictures sent to him. And I'm I'm happy that your son can, because I feel that we kind of really connected on kidney problems. We've known each other through, I believe we met at an R4 maybe three, yeah, a four, bunch five of years ago. ago. It was a few years ago and you deleted someone off of your friend list so that I could be your friend. Thank you for that. And then I realized that between your son's kidney issues and my kidney issues that we really do have a lot in common. And it makes me happy that your son facing his kidney issues can watch my story and have a calmness and a peace of mind about it. And that's what I believe that this is one of the things that it's all about. As realtors, we have to live our lives out loud. We can't be secret agents. And with social media, a lot of people in our business have this concern of, oh, I should keep my private stuff to myself. Maybe I shouldn't live out loud. But you and I totally look at this from a standpoint of it's who we are. So we should let people know. And then when you do let people know who you are and what you're going through, the connections are so much more than they would be if all you ever talked about was houses. Because you and I could talk about Remax stuff and that conversation would last five or six minutes. And instead, now our families connect and you're one of my inspirational heroes. And I can make sure that we do things for other people because you shared your story, which, oh, by the way, means people should think of you for Fort Myers real estate, but they're going to think about Kinsey the human first. And then they think about the real estate side. And that's who it's supposed to be like. It's not supposed to be this fake version of real estate that we've been trained in all these years. No, not at all. And being real, being authentic, being yourself really does go a long way. When I saw you at dinner, at the Monday night dinner at R4, we had Deborah Carr, who skipped a week of chemo to go to the convention And we've connected. We have Kathy Jackson, who had a brain aneurysm last year, who was at R4. And I've connected with agent Andrea Webb, who just received a kidney. She's a Keller Williams agent. She just received a kidney from Jenny Swain, a living donor, who Keller Williams promoted the fact that Andrea needed a kidney. And they had never met each other until... Jenny was a match and Jenny gave Andrea a kidney. Amazing the people that you connect with that are going through the exact same thing in the real estate community and how everyone is just there to love and support and help and hope and give shout outs of prayers and what do you need? The We, we have an amazing, amazing group of people that we surround ourselves with. And as soon as he's able to travel, I can't wait for you to meet the president from last year of our National Association, Bill Brown, from the Oakland, California area, who, as most people know, he was on the podcast a few months ago, 
had a double lung transplant last year during his presidential year, and his journey has been amazing. But it's 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 the way that you connect, and you have to leave it out there. And so, talking about leaving it out there and being in the real story, you got to talk about the transplant family that's been created now through through you and through your donor because it's it's heart wrenching and beautiful all at the same time. Yeah, I met my organ donor's family a very unconventional way. Most people write letters and the letters go through the organ procurement organization in which your organs were matched through. So my organs, I was registered on the transplant list through LifeLink of Florida. They provide organs from several hospitals And one of their main transplant centers is Tampa General Hospital. So the conventional way of being able to connect with your donor would have been to write a letter. Your letter goes to LifeLink. LifeLink approves your letter and passes on your message to your donor's family. Your donor's family can then write a letter. Their letter goes back to LifeLink, then LifeLink sends you their letter. And so you connect through a chain and everything is approved, but we skip that step a little bit. My donor, Elijah, was 15 years old when he passed and his family had set up a GoFundMe page and there were news stories about the way that he passed. And so between my team of friends and realtors and my assistant. All I was told when I got my phone call was that my organ donor passed away due to head trauma and was under the age of 18 years old. And that's all the information I received. So the donor's family received information that his heart went to a 16 year old. I got his left kidney, even though it's on my right hand side, his left kidney went to a woman, but they also received the news that a 37 year old female received his kidney and his pancreas. So if you Google Florida kidney pancreas transplant, I think I'm the first 50 pages that show up because I have promoted organ donation, and I promoted my story through every single form of social media possible. I think even LinkedIn, <laughs> which is just kind of funny. But that's the most boring social network out there. So at least you woke it up from boring, it. Right? Most boring social network ever. But I still use it for some reason. So somehow I still have like 4,000 people there, which I don't know where they all came from. Maybe one day I'll learn how to use it. <laughs> when you do, but, let uh, me know. <laughs> I will for sure. So we found his GoFundMe page. They found my page and everything matched up. So as I get to the hospital by 9 p.m. at night to Tampa General Hospital, they take probably close to 30 vials of blood from me. They need to make sure that I'm, as I'm in kidney failure, they need to make sure I'm 100% healthy to receive a transplant. Of course. Of course. Of course. Because uh, if you've had the cold, if you've had a flu, if there is anything that could compromise the organs, they move on to the next person in line. You don't want to waste it. Makes sense. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Because There's currently 115,000 people in America waiting for an organ transplant. How many many of those are kidneys? Are kidneys a pretty commonly needed organ? Yeah, kidneys, kidneys, livers, hearts, lungs, pancreas, corneas, bone marrow, skin, tissues, ligaments, ACLs. They transplant pretty much, I would have to say, there's so many items that they can transplant. So 115,000 people waiting for an organ transplant and on average 21 people pass away every single day while waiting for an organ transplant, which those are shocking numbers. Right, because not everybody that dies is A, a donor and B, eligible to have their stuff donated. So you want to speak to that? Absolutely. Only 45% of Americans are registered to be organ donors. But it doesn't cost any money, and you're not taking it It with you. I don't understand that. No, and you can still, if you donate your organs, you can still have an open casket funeral. 
you can still be cremated. Heaven only needs your soul. Mm -hmm. And even if you're going to hell, we'll still take your organs. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) No judgment. No judgment, people. No judgment. Although, actually, I take that back. We'll judge you if you don't donate your organs because... I will 100%. I don't see why you wouldn't. You know what? So my organ donor saved six lives when he passed away. And his mother, her hashtag is six is greater than 21. Oh, I love that I hadn't seen that. Oh. Yeah. So six is greater than 21. And he has, we have a page. um, Eli, hashtag six is greater than 21 is his Facebook page. His hashtag for Instagram, Facebook, six is greater than 21. And her whole purpose behind that hashtag, and this always makes me cry and always brings tears to my eyes, is that even though my son is gone, he saved six lives when he passed instead of seeing 21 pass away. Because on average, that's how many people die every day waiting for a transplant. Listen, people. Did you catch those numbers? If you are listening to this episode, we're fixing to tell you how you can become an organ donor. And honestly, just hearing those numbers, you should want to do it right now, today, because this could be the most important thing you do, whether you're thinking about real estate or not. Because when we're talking about our crazy shit in real estate, it's not always about selling more houses or about naked people getting busted having sex. It's about the opportunity that we have in real estate to touch lives. So whether or not you're in real estate, you have the chance to touch lives here. You could be the next Eli. Six is greater than 21. So Kenzie, tell them how they can become organ donors, how easy it is. It is so easy. You can actually, if you have an iPhone, you can go to the help app of your iPhone. For real? And I didn't know this. Oh, for real. For real. You can go to the help app of your iPhone. Are you on your iPhone right now? I'm going to do it right now. I'm already an organ donor, but I'm going to look at it, pretend I'm not. Right, to see how easy it is. Yes. And from the health app of your iPhone, once you fill out your name, your birth date, when you click to the next and you click to the next after you fill out, would you like to be an organ donor? How about that? Look, people, take you two and a half seconds. Right? Right? Shazam. Organ donation. Look. Donate life, people. Donate life. Says a single organ donor can save as many as eight lives. Eli was so close. He was 75% of the way to eight. That's pretty impressive. And you just click sign up or I can click I'm already a donor. And it says make sure that you put on your driver's license in case people look across state lines. Oh, there we go. Look, people. And it's, it's also important to let your family know your wishes. Yes. Because even though, even though... You want to be an organ donor. And even though you have that box checked and you have either the heart or the I am an organ donor on your driver's license, your family, if if it comes to that point, your family can say no at the hospital. Which is why everybody should have a health care power of attorney, which I have one on my parents. I have one on my husband and have one. And by the way, if you have grown kids if they're 18 years old and living at home and they're a senior in high school, you still have to have a health care power of attorney because the overreaching, ridiculous federal government and these stupid HIPAA laws means that that idiot 18-year-old, and I love your precious pumpkins, but 18-year-olds are not that smart yet. They're living at home on your dime. They get in an accident. You can't make decisions for them anymore, people. Get a health care power of attorney. Do it right now. And that's a great place to put this organ donation information. Make sure it's in writing, notarized, and legally done. And then you're going to take the pressure off your family because they don't want to make this decision. So you make it now. Make their time easier. Absolutely. And you can also, um, if you don't have an iPhone, you can go to registerme.org. And that will register you for the entire United States. So listen, if you're listening to this episode with all your full focus like you were asked to do earlier, don't worry because all of these links will be in the show notes for this episode along with Kenzie's contact information, which we'll get to that in a minute. But just remember, you need to go to show notes for this episode and do all the things because you could be saving up to eight lives yourself instead of that many more people perishing while they're waiting on you to die. Right. And if you have a very, very loving, kind and generous heart, you only need one kidney to survive and you could be a living donor and 60% 
of all kidney recipients receive a kidney from a living donor. So is that and I know you, several, is that you people? That? Pay attention, people. Is that you? Yeah. Yeah. And you can also donate your liver. So your liver is an organ that regenerates itself. So you can donate a portion of your liver. I know I'm looking at the look on your face, even though it's a podcast. That's so creepy and, sounding. It's just too creepy. It doesn't it sound, it sound so creepy. But so Lee, if, if you wanted to give away half of your liver, which, you know, you may or may not. But if one of your family members or one of your close friends was really in need and you were a match, I see your loving, giving, kind heart possibly giving away a portion of your liver because you give away a portion of yours and yours grows back. Just like a starfish growing its leg back. Look, you could be like the creatures of the ocean. Absolutely. Absolutely. And kidneys, you only need one kidney to survive. Okay, people. Uh, I've got to tell you, we hope you're going to think about taking action here because of Kenzie's story, the fact that Lincoln's got a mom who's healthy and she can actually still be active as a broker. In fact, before we wrap up our episode, you should tell them your agent's reaction to you and your recovery time during Hurricane Irma when your rehab hospital got evacuated. You had that great sign in your yard looking for a lineman to electrify your life. That was hilarious. And by the way, we're not going to tell you all of that because, frankly, you have to follow her on social media. She's going to give you those pieces of information. But tell them what it was like being a broker through all of this, because we know that agents have a lot of fear over brokers going through life change. So how did your agents react to you being incapacitated for a little while? Well, I have a very good team at my office. So my office management is amazing. My agents are amazing. I lost a few agents. It is what it is. I realize now that the people, not only just the realtors in my life, I love the realtors in my life. I love my team. I love my friends. I love my family. But when you go through a life changing experience and you're looking death directly in the eye, you really realize who you want to surround yourself with and who you hang out with who you choose to spend your time with, it completely changes. It makes it easier to fire the bad people out of your life, doesn't it? (laughs) It really does. And it's like, (laughs) I can't say the F-bomb on your show. (laughs) You (laughs) can say fiddlesticks. Right? I could be like, you're cool, you're cool, you're cool, fiddlesticks, you're cool. (laughs) See, and now this is friendly to where Lincoln can listen to our episode and Timmy can listen to it, too. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) All right, Kenzie, tell our world the hashtag they're supposed to use as they sign up for organ donation, because Kenzie and I would like to know how many of our listeners to this episode will run right directly out to the DMV, get it on your license and go to the register life and become a registered organ donor and use the hashtag don't bury good organs how awesome i love that hashtag so it's hashtag don't bury good organs and it's the one time in your life you don't have to use the apostrophe and i will not judge you because apostrophes don't belong and hashtag so you're going to do hashtag don't bury good organs and you're going to post on any of the social networks that you took action to help save some lives and you will use kinsey as your inspiration just as i do awesome thank you and then if, if they do need a great agent in the fort myers florida area and they'd like to help pay for all these medical bills that you've had because you don't mind selling some houses to pay down the bills. How can they find you or your amazing agents at Remax Dream? Well, we are very, very easy to find on Facebook. We are Remax Dream. Instagram, we are the Remax Dream team. YouTube, Remax Dream. Kinsey at RemaxDream.com, RemaxDream.com. If you Google Remax Dream Fort Myers, Florida, we show up. Myself, on Instagram, I'm Kinsey Lee Dream. On Twitter, I'm Kinsey Lee Dream. On Facebook, I'm Kinsey Lee Dream. So if you search anything, Kinsey Lee Dream, Remax Dream, we are the ones to pop up. And you could probably also Google kidney and pancreas recipient in Florida and you'll get Kinsey there too. So you really have no excuse not to follow and connect with this amazing right. woman, people. I- I am very, very easy to find. (laughs) No secrets, baby. No secret agents here. Absolutely not. 
I so appreciate you being on the show today. Listeners, take action. You have to take action. We need you. We need all your parts because when you're dead, you're not using them. And your family will cry over you regardless of whether you still have eyes in your head or a lung in your chest. So come on, people. Get after it. You could save yeah. a life and you could be like Kenzie and be an inspiration to your whole community and to people you've never, ever met. Kenzie, you're awesome. I so oh, appreciate awesome. that you leave your story out there for the world because it's big stuff. It's really big stuff. Oh, thank you. You make my heart smile. <laughs> well, you make me smile every day. So people follow Kenzie. All of her contact information will be in the show notes for this episode, along with the information to make yourself an organ donor. We expect every single one of y'all to go out and hashtag don't bury good organs. Get yourself registered today and show us what you're doing to help spread life while you spread love. And if you want to appear on a future episode, this is a top one. It's going to be a really tough one to beat. So shoot me a note at Lee Brown on Twitter or any of the networks to be featured. And then we'll see you next time. If you are listening to this episode and you need to tell us something about your crazy life in or around real estate, then tweet me at Lee Brown or reach me on any of the social networks. That's if you're a broker, realtor, investor, inspector, lender, or just a regular normal human being who happens to have dealt in real estate. Subscribe for more episodes. And as always, we are thrilled that you joined us for some crazy shit in real estate. See you next time.